According to a Lockheed Martin representative, the first F-35s with the Tech Refresh 3 update, mostly a CPU upgrade on which the fighter's Block 4 version would ride, will be shipped out before the middle of next year. Previously, it was anticipated that TR-3 jets would become ready in the final quarter of 2023. General Mark Kelly, commander of Air Combat Command, stated that the Air Force is giving new F-35 units priority when it comes to receiving jet deliveries with the TR-2 configuration. When aircraft equipped with TR-3 hardware leaves Lockheed's assembly line, it will be held in storage until flight testing, which started in January and is still ongoing, deems it safe for the services to accept. However, Kelly added that Tyndall Air Force Base in Florida is one of the new F-35 facilities that would get the last Air Force aircraft with the TR-2 type. We have updated our F-35 TR-3 schedule projections with the first TR-3 aircraft delivery between April and June 2024, the Lockheed spokesperson said. As a result, we now expect to deliver 97 aircraft in 2023 all in the TR-2 configuration. We are continuing aircraft production at a rate of 156 per year while simultaneously working to finalize TR-3 software development and testing. Additionally, we remain focused on receiving the necessary hardware from our suppliers to deliver this critical combat capability for the F-35. At the Defense News Conference in Arlington, Virginia, Kelly said that a group made up of ICC representatives and the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Operations had developed a rather elaborate plan that would not delay the initial arrival of airplanes at new F-35 facilities. Tyndall just got their first four airplanes. We didn't want to delay that, he said, adding that, I think the F-35s will arrive on time for Alabama and the other receiving units priority should be given to training new bases to operate and maintain aircraft as soon as feasible in order to facilitate the eventual integration of further new jets. According to Kelly, depending on the amount of the delay, a delay in subsequent deliveries to the new operating areas will take an impact on the combat air forces. Kelly said the Air Force needs the TR-3 with all possible speed because the high-end software, high-end hardware, high-end do, electronic warfare, is hard business. But we continue to follow the lead of our business associates. There will be effects, but we need to stand together and support them as a team," he continued. In general, Kelly remarked, by the time they get their last airplane, the clock starts and they need to be ready to go to war a year or so later when a unit transitions to a new aircraft. The global force management system will be affected by the delay and impact. The USAF's preparedness will be impacted since units that are receiving new equipment won't be back in rotation in time for forward deployments, according to Kelly. Kelly highlighted that the military will continue to function as best it can until TR-3 is complete, despite the Air Force's long-standing preference to purchase the fewest amount of F-35s possible until the Block 4 is ready. The upgrades, he claimed, are essential for the coming battle. The whole idea of a challenging peer scenario is a very challenging electromagnetic spectrum, fight, and very capable threats, Kelly said. And if we're going to engage that spectrum or engage those threats, we've got to have the fastest processing, the best jamming, the most coherent waveforms available. And that takes a really, really agile, stable software load to unlock those Block 4 hardware capabilities and unlock the AO. That's kind of the secret sauce that we're going to need. In line with Kelly's remarks, LT, Chen James C. Slife, who was recently nominated to take over as the Air Force Vice Chief, said, I wish we had the ability, when a crisis pops up somewhere around the world, to be able to evaluate it and say, does this crisis need a DR-3 Block 35, or is a DR-2 Block 35 sufficient? Instead, he claimed that due to a lack of fighters, the Air Force is operating at the knife edge of capability. 
It's frankly, check your pockets, see what you have in your pocket, and that's what goes. So getting these jets on time and fielded is absolutely critical to our ability to meet the global demand signal on a day-to-day -day basis," Slife said. The TR-3 remains our no. One development priority, according to a Lockheed spokeswoman. With more than 500 people, 15 labs, and flight tests taking place at Edwards Air Force Base and Naval Air Station Patuxent River, we are using vital experience to produce DR-3. According to the spokesman, the plan for software testing has been delayed due to unexpected challenges associated with hardware and software development, component and system integration testing, and qualification testing. L3 Harris is producing the integrated core processor, the TR3S Beating Heart. We have deployed employees to L3 Harris to help expedite hardware delivery and are working diligently with Raytheon on their delivery of the next-gen electro-optical digital aperture system, IOTIS, which will also be integrated with TR3, the spokesperson said.